Hello and welcome. I'm on a lane in Suffolk, motorcycling towards Cove Hive. On the coast, about four miles north of Southwold and seven miles or so south of Lowestoft. Cove Hive looks to be an interesting place to visit. In the Middle Ages it prospered as a town and port and during the 11th century reign of Edward I it was granted a fair on the feast day of its church, St Andrew. To have a fair granted in, a, in such a way by the king meant it must have been a place of some substance. It takes its name from the de Cove family who held to land there at the time and the fact that it had a hive or harbour for loading and unloading sailing ships of the day. You may have just caught a glimpse of the tower of Covehide's church on the left there. This area is popular with walkers and I suspect these cars parked here by people walking the footpaths hereabouts. There's the first cottage of Covehive Cove Hive village. There's the church the village coming up on the left. Here's Cove Hive, or rather what's left of it. Wow, just look at that ruined church. A once mighty building, with cathedral-like proportions. Clearly Cove Hive must once have been an important town to warrant such a large church. It's absolutely a huge ruin. Magnificent, even in this ruined state. Look at the windows. Gosh, if they were once full of stained glass, it must have been a sight to behold in its heyday. Yeah, Cove Hythe was once a big place, an important town on the coast. But by the 17th century it had fallen victim, like Dunwich, another important coastal town, it had fallen victim to coastal erosion. But just think back to the Middle Ages, this large church of St Andrew must have been built on the back of its wealth as a port town. The oldest fabric of the original large medieval church dates from the 14th century, although most of it is from the 15th century. And during the Civil War, much of the stained glass in those huge windows was destroyed by the local iconoclast, William, William Dowsing. But the interesting thing about this place is that by the latter part of that century, the large church was already too expensive for the parishioners to maintain, and they were given permission in 1672 to remove the roof and build a much smaller church within it. The small church is still in use, whilst the tower and the ruins of the old church are maintained by the church's conservation trust. There's the little church, built back in 1672. A humble dwelling, or rather a, a humble building with a thatched roof, stuck onto that grand tower. And surrounded by the ruined walls of that gigantic church which in reality only had about 
200 years of use. Okay, only 200 years, that's still quite a long time, but for a church of that size and grandeur, it seems pitifully short. And there's the village, all that remains of Cove Hive. And there's the gigantic parish church built in the Middle Ages, where Cove Hive thrived as a port town. That gigantic, I can't stress that enough, east window must have been a marvel to behold if it was once full of stained glass. Look at the work that's gone into the checkered flint pattern down the side of the church. There's the tiny little 1672 church butting onto the uh, tower inside the ruin. There's that checker work again. A lot of work went into that. And you can see the brick-built thatched humble parish church built within the walls of the old medieval cathedral-like church. Let's take a look inside that um, miniature church within a church. And immediately you're struck by its humble character. Its humble interior reflects its humble thatched exterior. The font is noteworthy and probably a survivor from the older ruined church. It is damaged and mutilated in places, probably by dowsing when he came to smash the glass. The iconoclasts, like William Dowsing, of course, did not want um, images, um, graven images they would have called them, inside churches, and, uh, and removed faces on animals as well as on angels, on things like the fonts um, inside churches. So where did the village go? Where did Cove Hive actually go? Let's take a walk down the road. This is a tarmac road, it's just that it's overgrown on each side by um, bushes of various sorts. And it's a rather dangerous road, or now footpath, because it comes to an abrupt halt. And over the edge of it is quite a drop down a cliff to the beach. And there lies Cove Hythe's port. The port that thrived in the Middle Ages. And the wealth of that port once built the, uh, the large church that we've just seen. It's quite fantastic, really, when you think about it. But this coast, this part of the coast, um, is suffering from huge erosion. Um, it's probably the most quickly eroding part of Britain. The coastal cliffs of Cove Hive are formed of glacial sands and other deposits. They're loose and unconsolidated and they erode rapidly, currently at around 4.5 um, yards a year. So walking back towards the church along the relatively recently tarmac road, um, you can see there's not a great deal left of Cove Hive. 
once its uh, wealth as a coastal port disappeared before the end of the Civil War in England, um, yeah, it could not sustain a population, it could not sustain a large church, hence the building of the humble little church within the old walls. In fact, you know, the, what, the one or two cottages around the church are the only visible remains of what was once a town. No access to beach by pedestrians, unsafe footway. They can say that again. Time to take one last look at that incredible ruin. I mean, this has been such a fascinating trip. To, uh, you know, turn from the entrance to this farm. And leave Kofi's. Passing cars parked by the walkers and hikers on the coastal pathways hereabouts. I suppose it's a little sad to think that at the current rate of erosion there'll be no cove high for anyone to see in a hundred years time. But for now there's plenty of early summer sunshine and glorious Suffolk lanes to enjoy intend to do just that. And whilst I'm riding along, let me just thank you for sharing the ride with me. And also say that YouTube is simply my store of motorcycling memories. Frankly, there's no monetary intent whatsoever. So if you'd like to join me on another ride, just like and subscribe, perhaps even share, and you'll then know when I'm next out and about. For now, I'm done.